Good evening, everybody. This is Ben with EmpireCV.TV. We're here at the end of November. I can't believe it's already the end of November. And we've got Black Friday. We've got a full weekend sale. Friday the 29th, the Saturday the 30th, and December 1st. We've got huge sales. The biggest sales are on Friday, so make sure you come in. We'll be opening early and staying open late. It's nine to nine. If you're a saver, you get a lot more out of it. You get bonuses uh, on top of that. You also get to extend the sale date from, or the good sale date from Friday to Saturday and Sunday. So if you can't make it on Friday, you can come in all weekend, but don't miss out on it. Also on Friday, we will have uh, coffee and snacks for people here early in the morning. So come early, uh, hang out, get a cup of coffee, dig through some back issues because the back issues are ridiculously cheap. Next month we have, uh, we've already tried to shoot this one so my, my throat is dry. Uh, we <laughs> We also have the 16th of next month is a toy drive. We'll have more info for that. We've also got the Friday the 13th. We're doing a customer appreciation party. We'll have more info on that. Now, if you guys are a savings club member, may, or if you aren't a savings club member, make sure you sign up by the 31st to get all of the bonuses from being a savings club member. Most importantly, if you have to sign up by December 31st, if you wanna get the advanced picks, and the line jump for free comic book day. You also get a monthly email, which you get bonuses on top of everybody else. So more info on all of that, you can find it on the website. We'll be talking about it more here. Into the books, we've got, you got Wonder Woman. I'm just gonna show that real quick because it's a lot of fun. She's a god now, but we have got Zero Year. You've got Red Hood and somebody who looks like Hush. I won't ruin it for you but uh, it's actually a pretty interesting uh, twist. I wasn't getting this, but when I flip through, I'm gonna get the, the zero year stuff because it looks like it's gonna be extremely important to the mythos. Well, I can't give you any info. You gotta read it. I, this isn't a spoiler alert. Birds of Prey, look at that. That's a beautiful cover. This is her during zero year. So it's in the past, Gotham, the lights are out. Batman's trying to figure out what the Riddler did. And another zero year tie-in but probably one of the coolest books on the shelf this week. It's just so neat. That looks like a lot of fun. The same week that Batman 66 is out. They just go hand in hand. For Forever Evil, you've got Trinity uh, Pandora, and you've got uh, Constantine in here. You've got Swamp Thing. You've got somebody called Night Nurse. I honestly don't know who that is, sorry. You've got um, Phantom Stranger, Pandora, and The Question. So that one uh, is tying in along with this. You've got the rogues. They're not faring very well without the heroes. In fact, they're kind of getting it handed to them. Uh, Animal Man from Lemire. Okay, this one, I, this was the best thing I read this week. I was literally laughing the entire time. Every single page is done by a different artist. You've got Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti writing this, and it's just hysterical. It feels like everybody drew the page that they wanted to draw, they just put them in a random order, and then wrote it. It was great, it was her breaking the fourth wall. It was a lot of fun, and a lot of great artists. You can also get a blank cover, in case you draw, in case you know somebody who draws, in case you go to a con and you want somebody to draw on it. Supergirl is going head to head with hell. Uh, you've got Superboy and Superman somewhere just not helping her as she goes head to head without her superpowers. Kyle, uh, well, the only person who knows that Kyle is alive is the New Guardians along with Carol. We also discovered at the end of the Relic storyline that Carol doesn't really have feelings for Hal anymore. Her feelings have gravitated towards Kyle. The two of them are on their own with the Guardians, out doing things. It's almost like a secret Avengers because nobody else knows that Kyle's there. They think he went behind the source wall while he was taking care of Relic. Fantastic Four, still not back. You've got Doctor Doom, you've got Annihilus, and you have my favorite Avengers villain of all time who makes his appearance on the last page. I just showed that to you because I love it. I don't get this. Is that from like a show or a movie? It, it doesn't make any sense to me, but it, you know what? Inside doesn't make much sense to me either because I'm reading a Scott book and it, doesn't, it just doesn't vibe. Just read the cover. All right, that, that says enough because that book is coming to an end and uh, we know why now, because they left the fate of the universe in Cable's hands. The really, uh, actually there's a couple Infinity. You've got Secret Avengers, you got this one, and you have Thunderbolts, but this is obviously the most important because this is Hickman's book. And speaking of uh, tie-ins that have gone on too long, Indestructible Hulk is still dealing with the Age of Ultron as he travels through time. Time to end that. Okay, there's a number of things here that make this so amazing. I mean, number one, it's Brian Wood. 
Number two, it's Terry Dodson. Everybody in this book is beautiful. And number three, Monet has come over from X Factor. And if that isn't enough reason, well, that's enough reason for me. I love her. I love her attitude. I love the, uh, the, just the look. And she's joining the X-Men. It makes sense because she's just another female X-Men. What do we got here? Cataclysm coming to a head. You've got Doc Ock almost reforming some of his Sinister Six. He's, got, he's brought them together to try and take on the Wrecking Crew. Not really much of a match, but maybe with Doc Ock at the head, they can do it. You've got an annual for Superior Spider-Man. He deals with Blackout. Yep, that, that's right, Blackout. Nobody cares. Most of you probably don't know who he is. BPRD Hell on Earth, I was just talking to a friend of mine about how good this book is. In fact, how superior this book is compared to a Hellboy book. And right there, front and center, Liz Sherman's got her mojo back. She's finally joining the fight. She's finally going to do something to help save humankind. Life with Archie number two. Jughead is ripping out throats in this. People are getting hit over the head with fire extinguishers. It's not what you expect with Archie, and it'll be on the top shelf if you're looking for it. Finally, some Murphy. We left this off last time. Uh, if you were going to wait for the trade, close your ears for about 10 seconds, where not only did we have an incalculable number of these sea creatures coming at them, but all of a sudden there's one that's like 500 feet tall. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not sure what's taking it so long to come out. It's got to be Murphy because as fun as this is, Snyder could write this in his sleep. Sex criminals? I've, I've told you about this before. The, the, uh, the two of them make love and come together and freeze time. And then what do they do with that while front time is frozen? They rob banks. I mean, it's just a natural extension. Imagine Agents. This is essentially a men in black, but on a kid's level. You've got all these imaginary friends. They spend a certain amount of time with their, uh, their children before they grow up and they have to go on. You've got a group of people who can see them, who have the technology to apprehend them, and essentially give them a home when they have nowhere else to go. Of course, you've got some imaginary friends who don't want to go home, who have bigger plans, and that's where the men in black aspect comes in. It's an all-ages book. It's really fun. Voices in the Dark, it's a new Top Cow one. It's dealing with a young woman who goes to college. It's a very, it's a real world book. And I don't normally like real world books because we live there and I don't need that in my comic books. But I felt I needed to try this one out because it got some press, it looked interesting. It's a girl who goes to college. She's heading off for her first year. And about three months ago, she killed her first person. It's, it's very strange. We're watching her and her demons. We're watching her as she deals with people and wants to strangle them or stick a pen through their throat. She has a, that's where the voice in the dark comes in. She convinces them to let her have a radio show where she talks to people and they can essentially let their inner demons out. I've got to digest it. It was, it was very angsty, but it was a long read and uh, it was interesting. It was not what I expected. So that's it, guys. Don't forget about the Savings Club program. Thank you very much for having me.